TV Crazy Man here. In this video, I run down the wildest and craziest Robbie the Robot TV and movie appearances that go well beyond his amazing debut on the movie Forbidden Planet. I want to shake my booty! <laughs> Hang on as we go to decades of Robbie the Robot, the hardest working robot in Hollywood history. I am monitored to respond to the name Robbie. Whoa, great impression of Linda Blair. <laughs> Robbie the Robot made his debut in the 1956 high-budget sci-fi film Forbidden Planet, where he was the main draw of the movie. He shared a screen with Leslie Nielsen, Jack Kelly, Anne Francis, Richard Anderson, and Earl Holliman. The film was set in the 23rd century on a distant, colonized world. You are a robot, aren't you? That is correct, sir. Actually, in real life, of course, Robbie was more like a mechanized suit. Reported cost of Robbie ranged from $100,000 to $125,000, which was a huge amount for the 1950s. These are his eyes. These his ears. And this is his brain. The famous poster for the film shows a threatening robot carrying a struggling pretty girl, which was a staple of monster movie posters from the 1950s. But no such scene occurs in the film as Robbie was a likable machine Programmed to never harm any human. Welcome to Altair 4, gentlemen. Now, Robbie didn't just play in the movie. He also promoted it on the Perry Como show in 1956 with Anne Francis. This is Robbie the Robot. He's one of the stars of Forbidden Planet. Uh, Robbie, this is Perry Como. On the Forbidden Planet, I am president of the Robots for Como fan club. In 1957, the B-movie follow-up to the Forbidden Planet, The Invisible Boy, was released. The movie has a really great plot. It's explained that a vanished scientist claimed to have developed a time machine and retrieved Robbie from the future. A photograph on the wall shows the return to Earth of the space cruiser from Forbidden Planet and the arrival of uh, Robbie the Robot. In the movie, a boy has to put Robbie back together, who becomes controlled by an evil supercomputer for a portion of the movie, which leads to the military firing all the rockets and ammunition at Robbie to no avail. And personally, I would have named the movie The Return of Robbie the Robot instead of The Invisible Boy. In 1958, Robbie appeared on the TV series The Thin Man. The Thin Man was a series about amateur detectives who investigate crimes. In the episode Robot Client, the main characters visit the home of an inventor who happened to invent Robbie the Robot, and they have to prove that the robot was not an instrument of murder. But one thing I am sure of, nobody's safe as long as Robbie's alive. Next, Robbie appeared on the Gale Storm Show. From what I gather, it was like the 1950s version of The Love Boat. The episode was entitled, Robot from Inner Space. In 1962, on the TV series Hazel, on the episode Rosie's Contract, Hazel, a maid, has a nightmare that Robbie takes over her house chores and she loses her job and becomes homeless. Robbie did a guest spot on one of my favorite TV shows of all time, The Many Loves of Dobie Gillis. The series starred Dwayne Hickman and Gilligan actor Bob Denver. I guess I had discovered this series when I was close to becoming a teenager. And boy, could I relate to Dobie, and maybe a little bit to Maynard, too. What bugs me is this. I like girls. I love girls. I just want one. One beautiful, gorgeous, soft, round, creamy girl. <laughs> That's all I want. One lousy girl. Yes, teenagers in the 80s weren't that much different from teenagers in the 60s. But let's get back to Robbie the Robot. On the episode Beethoven, Presley, and Me, Robbie plays a robot named Arnold that can guarantee hit records. Well, Arnold, what do you think of the song? <laughs> <laughs> Thanks to an electrical accident, Denver, aka Maynard G. Krebs, takes on the robot's mentality in this episode. <laughs> nope, I didn't speed up the film, if that's what you're thinking. It's really Robbie the Robot singing. You've just crossed over into the Twilight Zone. Robbie the Robot appeared on two episodes of the Twilight Zone. Three if you count the episode where he appeared as a toy. In season five on the episode Uncle Simon in 1963, Robbie's appearance was altered, combining his familiar body with another head. Soon 
I will have all my faculties. Later, that same season, toward the end of the season, he appeared on the episode The Brain Center at Whipple's in 1964, looking a lot more like his old self. Tonight's tale of oddness and obsolescence from the Twilight Zone. Robbie once again proves he can do great comedy on the 1966 episode of The Addams Family entitled Lurch's Little Helper. In this episode, Robbie goes by the name Smiley and is built by Gomez. He then becomes Lurch's assistant, taking over Lurch's butler duties. But Lurch gets jealous and eventually dismantles Robbie. A smiley. Reside. In 1966, Robbie appeared on Lost in Space on the episode War of the Robots. This episode is probably the closest thing Robbie had done in years to his debut on the Forbidden Planet. Except here, Robbie was clearly all bad. My sensors will not accept the possibility. As he tried to capture the Robisons, which led to a robot showdown with the Lost in Space robot. I have computed you. And your memory banks do not scan. I'm not completely sure, but I think in the language of robots that that was an insult. He also appeared in the third season episode Condemned of Space as a robotic jailer. If you want more Lost in Space after this video, check out my Lost in Space Goose video. Oh, and please don't forget to like this video. Thanks. It's the Banana Splits Adventure Hour! The rest of the 60s was a very hard time for Robbie. He had to depend on his sister Mildred to bring home money which she made from her work on the Saturday morning TV series, The Banana Splits Adventure Hour from 68 to 70. You are a banana split. Mildred looked like Robbie, if Robbie had lost his head and went to a junkyard on Sesame Street to replace it. Finally, in 1974, Robbie made a comeback on the detective drama Columbo on the episode Mind Over Mayhem. How you doing? Robbie decided to go for the dramatic look on this one as he thought it might be cool if he sort of went Raymond Burr from Ironside. You know, since it was a detective show. Robbie was designed for this episode to get around on rollers instead of his usual mechanized legs. The 70s really started to pick up for Robbie, especially on Saturday morning television. In 1976, Robbie played the heroic Alfie on one episode of Art 2 entitled Robot. Robbie sacrifices himself to save the team of the Ark in this TV series set in the future ravaged by pollution. Space Academy, founded in the star year 3732. Robbie popped up again the next year on the Saturday morning TV series Space Academy on the episode My Favorite Masia. This Saturday morning TV series set in the future in outer space reunited Robbie with Jonathan Harris from Lost in Space. But this time, Robbie is wearing a Cyclops head design that was also used on the TV series Project UFO in 1978 on the episode The Waterford Incident. In that episode, he was an alien robot. That series was about two government agents that investigate UFOs, way before Mulder and Scully did in the 90s. Thank you, excuse me. In 1979's Wonder Woman episode Spaced Out, Wonder Woman goes to a sci-fi convention and runs into who else but Robbie the Robot, or at least the guy in a Robbie the Robot suit. The guy who's supposed to be in this suit? He's a lush. You can't see air. Ah, uh, then you've never been to Los Angeles. <laughs> in 1979, Robbie does his best performance of the entire 1970s. It's for you. Thanks in part to the voice work by Roddick McDowell, famous for Planet of the Apes. No one's going to miss me over the weekend, except maybe the Coke machine. And the hilarious backup of Robin Williams. You can slip me some tan, baby. Whoa, well, heavy metal. All of this in the Mork and Mindy episode, Dr. Morkenstein in 1979. I want to dance. I want to shake my booty. <laughs> Robbie definitely ended the, the 70s on a high note with this one. Robbie appeared on a few things in the 80s, like a variety show named Pink Lady that I honestly am not very familiar with. And then he was back to the Ironside version of Robbie for The Love Boat in 82. 
There was a cameo in the Gremlins movie, and then nothing much until he made a really cool appearance on the movie Looney Tunes Back in Action in 2003, which featured a lot of awesome looking retro aliens. Can I be of service? I am monitored to respond to the name Robbie. Just a quick reminder before we continue, you are watching the TV Crazy Man channel, where you can find all of your classic TV memories hanging around. And I also would like to ask you to check out my other channel for family-friendly cartoons called the Freddy Cat Cartoons Channel. I base a lot of my cartoons on my real-life experiences, like my war with my washing machine that I'm pretty sure wants to destroy the universe. And my latest Humpty Dumpty cartoon where Humpty tells his son the story of Jonah and the whale. Please spread the word to your family and friends. And now, back to the video. Robbie has even done some TV commercials, like this one for AT&T, and even Sherman. Don't squeeze the Sherman. Remember that? Don't squeeze Sherman. Don't squeeze Sherman. Sherman's doubly fluffy, doubly don't irresistible. Sherman. Don't squeeze. Fluffy. <gasps> squeeze Sherman. Squeeze Sherman. Exactly. In the 70s, Robbie was even trying to sell music. Well, that's it on this video. Please subscribe and hit the bell so you don't miss any future memories of the past with my next TV Crazy Man video. And don't forget to share your memories and thoughts in the comments below. Thanks and have an awesome day.